summer isn't over yet, so we still have lemons and basil and warm days. But we've had these thunderstorms and strong winds that have left me craving something creamy and comforting. So I'm preparing homemade ravioli filled with ricotta and Italian herbs from our garden. Spinach and ricotta ravioli are well loved all over the world, but I found in Tuscany the Italians will often just opt for a classic ricotta filled ravioli and a light butter and sage sauce so you truly taste the fresh egg pasta and the hint of nutmeg. Just you wait, this dish is going to be delicate but creamy, the saltiness tempered by the freshness of herbs that transport you to a hillside in Tuscany. I start with double O flour. I like to use a lot of eggs. Egg yolks make your pasta rich in color and flavor, but alone they don't create enough elasticity, so you may find the dough hard to work with. So I'm using two whole eggs and four egg yolks. Store-bought ravioli is often pasty and pale and sort of thick and rubbery, don't you find? And that's not what we're making here. I want buttery, light pillows through which you can almost see the filling, which just collapse into salty creaminess as soon as you have one in your mouth. I put this marble slab on the table because you really need to prepare pasta on a smooth, cold surface. <laughs> Cow. I need for about 10 minutes. The renovations have reached stratospheric levels of chaos now. Our bedroom looks like a bomb site, so last night we slept on the floor of the only room in the house not covered in rubble and dust. I can only go into the house to fetch film equipment if I'm wearing a proper construction worker's mask. Consequently, I'm cooking down here on the terrace of my parents' little cottage. They have gone to visit my sister in Spain before my baby is born. This gets covered airtight and left for at least an hour to rest for hydration. We want the flour to absorb the egg and the bonds of gluten we've just created not to break apart straight away. I collect herbs from our garden, which has come back to life after the storms. The heat has gone down from 42 degrees to about 35, and my mother has been out here every morning pruning and weeding and giving the uh, vegetable garden lots of Lots of love. I pick some basil, some thyme, parsley, mint, oregano, and sage. The recipe will be on my site, kaliflavel.com, and pinned uh, with a link in the comment section below. But I must say, it's up to you how many herbs you desire in your filling. Unlike cooked spinach, they're not going to create any problems of excess moisture inside the pasta, so I like to just finely chop and then keep adding until I'm happy with the ratio of ricotta to herbs. The pasta dough is ready to roll out. I've often made ravioli with a rolling pin or a wine bottle if you don't have a pasta machine. It's important to keep the remaining dough airtight so it doesn't dry out while you're working uh, the first piece of dough.
You may find it easier to cut your strip once it's getting thin so it's not too long to work with. I like to make my dough nice and thin just so that you can see the silhouette of your fingers through the pasta. It's crucial to sprinkle some semolina onto your work surface, otherwise you'll go to all the trouble of making the ravioli, only to find them stuck to the bench at the end. A lot of this semolina will just fall off in the hot water later, so it doesn't make the pasta too dry. You can either create two strips and lay one on top of the other, like this, or you can fold one strip in half. I find it easiest not to exaggerate with the filling because you want lots of space to be able to squeeze out the air bubbles and cut a nice neat edge. Run a little water on the edges before you close so the pasta sheets will stick together happily. When you're cupping the little ricotta mounds to push out the air, start from the folded side first so the air can freely escape out the cut side. I have a very old pasta cutter, I should really get a new one, and it doesn't drive straight, so I'm not getting the perfect crinkle cut edge, uh, but you could also cut these edges with a knife. Keep your finished ravioli waiting on a large tray sprinkled with more semolina, and don't put any of the little parcels on top of each other because they could stick together. And now for the sauce, I crush a little garlic, saute it in some butter, olive oil, lemon juice, and fresh sage. The ravioli go into salted boiling water for only a minute and a half or so. I've rolled my pasta quite thin, so it will cook in no time at all. Don't forget to take a little pasta water, which will uh, add to the, to the sauce, and it will help the sauce coat the pasta and achieve a silky, creamy texture. And now just swirl the ravioli for a few seconds in the sauce before turning off the heat and adding a generous amount of parmigiano on top. The kitchen is fragrant with so many delicious scents, lemon, butter, herbs. It's comfort food, but it's still light and summery. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's a little bit of a short one this week because I had a very difficult week, I will explain uh, next week in the next episode you will see what happened but uh, hopefully you still enjoyed this little recipe and uh, I wish you a beautiful weekend. I thank all of my patrons and I'll see you next Friday. Alla prossima!